Good. So um, I'm, I'm very glad to, to be here. Nice to have me. Um, what I will try to explain is a bit the history of the Committees of Practice Playbook. That's a playbook that we, that we built with a little team of four people, me included. Uh, I think it was already four years ago. So this is the book, I already said. That's a playbook, so there are some very concrete stuff you can do with it. And the good news is that you already paid it because it's based on your tax incomes, right? Yeah. So you can order it, um, go on that um, link here. You will find out that that playbook summary is also online. You can, from that online short version, you can download the playbook as a PDF, but you can also order it to receive it at home. I mean, if you don't really need it, think about the planet. You don't need to have the post and to, to, to use paper. PDF is enough, but okay, know that uh, for a learning perspective and for teaching perspective, it might be nice to have the book. If you want to see it, I, I leave it here um, this afternoon so you can, you, you can have a look. So, uh, yes, I need to click. So why did we did that? Basically, within the commission, uh, and I'm working basically as a freelancer, so everything what I say is normally covered fully by my colleagues, but I'm still uh, not officially um, someone from the commission. Um, basically, what we wanted to, uh, to do uh, a few years ago is really to understand um, what, we can, what are the experiences of the, of the different internal communities that we could highlight and that we could learn from. So the goal of these communities within the commission <clears throat> through different DGs, within a specific DGs, is really to uh, learn from peer experience, for, uh, to facilitate the change, the transformation, you know, quite anticipating and integrating new ways of working, exploring, innovate, and the like, right? And um, for us, the community is really, the way that we see it is really to to understand what is the community reality. So we had a lot of interviews, by the way, to build that book. It was really based on evidence, on interviews of community managers, like it was 35, if I'm not mistaken. So um, what are the challenges and the opportunities of all these communities? We built some toolkits. This is the toolkit the playbook, and we continue this year to build some add-ons to that playbook. And what is the science, the science, sorry, the science uh, behind, because we need to, yeah, sorry, I speak a bit Dutch too, so I mix a bit, <laughs> because I'm Belgium. Um, <clears throat> so that's what we do. So the playbook is really about a guidance, basically. It's really about a guidance about, I need to start my community, I need to start with a new community, to build a new community, uh, what do I need to do? What's the first step? Um, is there a first step? Uh, what are the different topics that I need to cover? Um, and how do I do it? What are the questions I could ask to people if I invite 20 people uh, from my uh, organization in a room? What are the questions I need to ask them? So we collected all these questions, all these problems that uh, other communities, managers were identifying, and we try indeed with that playbook to answer these questions. And it comes to that wheel. I have to say that, <clears throat> and all the references are in the playbook, there is a study from university, if I could recall, it was something like between Glasgow and Switzerland, right? And they had already some studies, scientific studies about communities of practice. And they had a wheel model. And what we did, we assessed a bit their own model and we completed it with other uh, topics that you can see here. The wheel, so this is the model, is uh, divided in three main parts. The first part, let's say, is the co-ownership part. You need, if you want to build a community, you need, of course, to make sure that you are on the same page, that you have a goal that is common. What do you want to do together? Is it clear for everyone? Is your boss, your manager, your stakeholder, whatever, it depends from uh, one community to another, on the same page? What is the vision? What is the vision of the, all this, and what is the purpose of that community? The second part is what we call the seven C's. Actually, there are eight, but the seven C's, it was referring to the song, you know? Sweet dreams. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, the seven C's are all about collaboration, and I go into the details. And then the last part is about community management. 
What is the community manager role? Often, when we had people in workshops, when we organized some trainings and the like, people come with, I want to have a training on community management. And basically, they see that as answering uh, questions on the platform, posting some new stuff and liking some comments. It's way more than this. So you need to start with, as I said, with the vision. What are the objectives? What do we want to reach? I heard some people talking about engagement. Yeah, what's engagement? Basically, because do you want to have a community of 10 people sharing high quality and working together on high qualitative content, uh, and at the end of the, uh, of the year delivering one book? Or do you want to have a community of uh, 100,000 people just to raise awareness about one topic? It's not the same goal, right? It's not the same vision. And the community or the communities or the sub-communities that you will build around this, they have different purposes, right? And in one purpose of, of, of a community of practice, you can have different, uh, sorry, in one vision of a community of practice, you can have different sub-purpose, uh, okay? Um, and you need to quantify them. It needs to be concrete, and it's very, 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 very difficult, because often no one dares. What could be the concrete objective to reach? Number of likes? What else? Often the discussion stops there. But you need to go further. What will be the governance of it? What is the structure of decision? Do you want the members of the community to be part of the governance of your community? Do you have a governance body that is, well, with citizens, for example? Or are you the only one to take the decision? How do you ask people uh, the way they see it? For example, and I will talk about this later, for Education for Climate, we have an advisory group, <clears throat> and we, each year we ask citizens to come to that advisory group just to be part of our discussion in our little team, right? Um, we know that we need to decide afterwards because, yeah, we are European Commission ourselves, but it's super important for us to um, do that in collaboration with a uh, citizen. We don't overpromise. we are clear on our governance, we know that it's for consultation, they know it's for consultation, but you need to decide first how you will organize this. Governance. That governance is not only important to drive your community, that governance is also super important to make sure that your community is a safe place. And safe place, I mean, I'm not talking all about the tool, right? Uh, I, I told someone this morning that 20 years ago, um, I was working in Arnhem, not so far from here, for the Rijkswaterstaat. Actually, it was 30 years ago. I'm super old. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and it was about teleworking. 30 years ago, the only, comp the only tool that you had on your computer was Word, Word Perfect, was it? The only thing you, could, you, you were able to do is to change the color, right? And you, the Rijkswater start, they were starting implementing, guess what? Teleworking. And the question we wrote and the question we had to define 30 years ago were the same that you discuss on TV, TV channels still today, right? So I know the world is changing a lot, but still not, not enough, maybe. And it's not about the tool. You can organize the networking 30 years ago without computer, with a little 120K stuff doing <laughs> Most of you, you don't remember, right? It's the same for community. When I speak about governance and when we speak about risk uh, environment, it's not only the platform, the wonderful open social. It's not only this. It's the, 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 the community itself, right? It needs to be risk-free. And um, you need to make sure that you take into account all stakeholders, possible stakeholders of that community. Meaning, you need to start by building a stakeholder mapping. Who are the people involved, concerned, uh, in connection with the community vision, purpose, goal, and the like? Doing that stakeholder mapping is super key because you need to understand who are the personas. I don't speak about marketing personas, I speak about design personas. Who are the people 
involved in that world stuff that you would like to have or that you would, don't specifically would like to have in your community, but who will be influenced or who will be touched by what you do with that community. So you need to build that stakeholder mapping to understand exactly what the governance and to define the governance you need, taking into account all, this, all these stakeholders and making sure that for all that diversity of stakeholders, you build a risk-free environment. Thirdly, you need leadership, right? We are speaking here about communities of practice, communities of practice that can be internal but also external. Still, you have someone who pays. You have someone who decides, right? You have someone who is the sponsor of it, who asks the question, who requests you to do it, or who back you to do it, right? So you need leadership on that community. You need, some, um, you need a clarity on that leadership, but it's not enough. There is not one guy or one woman or one little group of um, high-level people who will decide of all this because the community needs to, to run daily. And that's the reason why you can't be alone as one, maybe also even not two, maybe even not three community managers. You need to have what we call in the playbook a core group. That core group needs to be a group that is um, diverse also. In our view, in our experience, the more you build on um, multidisciplinary teams, core group, the better. Because to drive a community, you need to have a lot of different competencies and skills uh, to make it uh, okay uh, every day. So who are the people in your core group? Do you have one core group? It, it's, it's really stunning when you have interview and when we had these interviews with um, a lot of community managers that most of them, a lot of them, they were quite alone. For most of them, they got the mandate or the request to build a community for management teams in the beginning, but then it stopped more or less this. There, sorry. So building a core group of people who can advise, who can help, is super important. And thirdly, yeah, you need investment, you need sponsorship, you need to have means, resources to uh, make it happen. That's something, and we see it in the use case that I will explain just afterwards, that's something that we hear a lot, <clears throat> but, but that we experience also ourselves a lot. For a lot of people who request to build a community, and maybe the one who requested you to build a community, Often the vision is, not always, but often the vision is, the soonest it is autonomous, the better. Question, is it possible to run a community? Even with open social, with a lot of it, automati Stefano will automatize everything, but still, do you still need some community managers? Yes. Uh, with different skills? Yes. With a lot of different competencies. Uh, and daily. Maybe not daily full time, but you need to have a team. Daily, so you need investment and sponsorship. The seven C's are really about, okay, we have know the goal, we know what we want to do, we know what is the um, purpose of that community, They're all fine, we have a leader who uh, really speaks for us, who is the best ambassador of the community, um, we have investment, everything is organized, our governance is there, what do we do? What do you do? What, what are the activities that you want to organize with your community? I mean, online, hybrid, in real life. What is the pace of it? Basically, how will you convene these people? And all this is, is already defined by the goal and the um, vision that you had from the beginning, basically. Because if your community is to raise awareness, if you talk with all these people you identified, I mean, not all the people, but with the people representative, uh, the, the, the personas that you identified via the, the stakeholder mapping, and if you know that they want to, the goal of the community is to raise awareness, right? And that the, the goal, the purpose of the community is to, um, to disseminate validated information. The convening part will be most probably organizing mostly conferences identifying good speakers with good content that is validated and organizing these conferences. That's maybe true for one community. But for another one, if the, 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 the point is more to validate that content together, 
you won't do that only. You will convene differently, right? You will organize other kind of uh, activities. So it's convening, meaning also around that convening, the fact that you need to communicate. You need to, to uh, make sure that people can connect. In a lot of community, people have the, that that first uh, needs to connect with others. Or do you organize that connection? All right? You can't organize it by having two people in a, in a WebEx session talking all the time. They can't connect together. What tool do you need to do that for, for doing this? And you need to build and to make sure that there are conversation uh, started and continuing. And the third point on, on convening or on convening is the boundary spanning. What we heard a lot um, is that um, for a lot of community, the more you have people coming from the outside, and I have in, here in mind communities of practice within organization mostly, the more you have people coming outside the boundaries of that organization where you have that community of practice, the better. The better, or the, it depends from one community for another indeed, but the better or the most motivating, or, and, and so on and so on. So how do you identify these, these people outside the boundaries? How do you make sure that you can have them in the community? I heard in a lot of organizations, I don't speak for the European Commission here only, but in, in a lot of other organizations, um, I heard so many times people saying, yeah, we will have a community in Microsoft Teams. I mean, let's be serious, guys. It's not a, it's not a, a chat with only people from the organization. It's way more than this. You will see on the internet a lot of people saying, let's, have, let's build a community on Slack because then it's outside. It's a chat. I mean, come on, let's be serious. So how do we convene people and how do you make sure that people outside are coming in? So SaaS solution is absolutely, for us within the commission, is, is, is super important also and makes a huge difference because citizens can become member by their own decision. They don't need to be invited. They don't need to receive an authorization. Of course, we have some spam problems, so we verify the profile to give them more uh, roles and the like and to convene with them differently, defining on this, just to keep the safe place. But in the end of the day, it's a decision of one citizen, one teacher, one student to become a part of the community. Thirdly, community management. I talk too much, huh? so if I go, no, it's okay, it's okay. Um, community management. So community management, yeah, there. C community management. It's yeah, you know what community management is. I think two, 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 maybe two points on this. One is a community manager is not only the one who is posting some stuff, who is crea creating the event and the like. He is a facilitator, right? Ideally, the community manager will facilitate, support people who will create these events. Ideal world, you have uh, some People in your community who would like to organize an event, they know the topic, they would like uh, to do it online or arbitrate and the like, and you help them, you facilitate all this, or you facilitate conversation. You are not the one in the conversation. You are the one making sure that this conversation, these collaboration processes, these cooperation processes, um, I forgot to explain, but you get the point, these cooperation and collaboration processes are okay. Often, <clears throat> when you uh, support new communities and you discuss about, yeah, is it about collaboration or cooperation? People are already lost because they never thought about this, and it's not the same. It's not the same trigger for engagement that you have people in your community who need, want to collaborate, or people in your community who need, want to um, cooperate. It's not the same motivation. At the end of the day, they don't win between, quote, the same stuff, and it's not the same engagement uh, drivers or blockers that you uh, might find. The community manager is the one who really needs to um, facilitate uh, all this. And then it was before COVID, of course, but um, it was already very, 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 very key. That community management needs to be, when I say community manager, team, jurors, needs to be uh, able to facilitate to organize all this online, but also in real life or hybrid. Not everything is online, not everything is in real life. 
if you build a community with um, a tool and you say, okay, my role is basically to organize some meetings like today, and then, yeah, guys, continue the conversation online, but you are never there, mm -hmm. it's not complete enough, right? And the contrary round is the same. You are online and you say to people, it would be nice, guys, that you meet, and then the day they meet, you are not there to facilitate and to support. No, you need to mix both and you need to reflect about how to do it um, hybrid. Then, user experience. And we didn't put that expressly uh, in the community management because we, used, uh, we, used, we learned that a lot, uh, a lot from a lot of people that user experience was super key. And I think Moritz uh, explained that uh, this morning a, a lot. Um, user experience is is super complex because you have a lot possibly in your community, I guess, I mean, in our case for Education for Climate, the diversity is so huge. I guess for other communities here, I guess in, do, uh, at, at Greenpeace, you have a lot of different kind of users. Defining the user experience is super key and you, need, you have a lot of information in your, at your disposal to do it but you need to take that into, into account. For example, we see in Education for Climate that something like 30%, more or less, uh, whatever, 30% of people connecting are connecting via mobile, right? Uh, so everything that you post on the platform, um, it needs to be responsive. Of course, you will tell me, open social is by design responsive, indeed, but when you build a dashboard in open social, when you put a visual, you need to think about that and you need to test it. Right? Because the visual will be resized. Because if you build a dashboard, oh, it's a nice dashboard. We have nine big squares. Yeah, but the, the ninth one, it's, you need to scroll 10 minutes, right? So, um, so you need to take that into account. And that's, that's about, about user experience and experience design. Who are these people connecting and what are they experiencing? As a new uh, user, but also as an experienced user, as the one who is maybe connecting uh, twice a week, all right? So that's the reason why, for example, I asked Mia just, be, just before, could you please go to the platform and tell me everything that you feel about it? Because it will help me to really understand her experience. Maybe some other one from the same country, same age, will have another experience, whatever, but you need to collect all this. By the way, that's a role for the community manager, and it takes a lot of time, and you are always wrong in the end. I know it's discouraging, but basically we always do a lot of mistakes. I will explain that for Education for Climate. Um, and then you need to provide support. Support is super key. Support is super, super, super key. You always think that what you designed is super cool and super, super simple to understand. And then people call you and say, how do I find the login button? And, and for you, it's quite obvious. No, not for everyone. I mean, everyone is different, uh, has different habits. You need to give that support. If you don't give support, and it, be, it needs to be quick, you lose people. You lose. And then you need to measure. And you need to measure. What do you need to measure? Participation, engagement, vitality of the platform. How do you define, define the vitality of the platform? It will depend from one community to another. With what tool do you define it? Of course, if you use open social, you have some tools. It's not enough. Because you need to understand where are these people coming from, right? So within the, the, the European Commission, for example, we have a, a wonderful tool, kind of uh, Google Analytics stuff, right? And so we see where are people coming from, where they are clicking the most, right? Uh, because it's nice to see that you have uh, higher engagement on topic, uh, that you have more comments and the like, but on what post exactly, right? You can't go one by one. So it's very nice to have that kind of tool to really be able to analyze, to measure what is the activity. It's really helpful when you have spammers um, to see what VPN they use. No, I'm kidding. Um, but no, no, it's really, really, really important. It helps you to understand what the vitality on what kind of topic and the like. So um, we measure that all. We have a dashboard only for us, super, super uh, detailed with how many people are participating, contributing a bit like what we discussed this morning. Uh, and it evolves all the time. 
to uh, loop back to what we said was said this morning about the 90 percent, 9 percent, and 1 percent, we have for education for climate almost the same. A bit, the 1 percent is a bit bigger, but in the end, indeed, if you have 10 percent people who connect, it's already huge. What do you measure? Yeah, some people told us, yeah, you know what? Your last event, you had only 100 people. And we had 200. Yeah, but in our community, we organize one event a month. All right, so what is the time span? What do you measure? Yeah, I organize one big event. I have 300 people. My cost is this. I organize little events. I connect with people. I know who are the ones who are coming back and back, back again. I do that on one year. Can we compare? Maybe. Depends. What is the goal? <clears throat> and these results have to be linked to the objectives. What you measure needs to be linked with that objectives, right? If you want to raise awareness, if you want to build qualitative and the, and the like. Right? So that's the full concept of the playbook. Everything that I explained is explained here way better because I didn't write it. So my colleagues are really good in copywriting and um, explaining stuff. So um, don't hesitate to read it again. You will find a lot of, um, for each chapter, you have templates. Um, you have templates like big templates. You can print in A0 because you can download the PDF. It was before COVID. The idea was to do that in a big room with post-its. So all the concept was you download the, the, the big poster, A0, you put it on the wall, and you ask people to put post-its and the like. You can still do it with Miro, right? Or other, another tool like this. But you have also a summary of all the questions asked in the, um, <clears throat> in the big board, visual board, um, like this. And there is one called the roadmap. And the roadmap is basically in a very short, a very short version of, of what I just explained with two questions. Often people told us, yeah, but if I begin, if I have a meeting with the people, um, the stakeholders that I identified and the like, what are the, what to start, what are the questions I need to ask? How can I know what to start with? And basically ask this question to see where you are. Sometimes the vision is definitely clear. Sometimes you already know how to convene because you already convene people every, every um, a month for one year, maybe. Sometimes stuff are very clear and stuff are not. If you scan this, and some of you, you already did it, you come to what we call the community of practice barometer. So you will find back these questions and you can fill in the survey. Um, <clears throat> that's a way also that you could do if you have a community with a lot of people. Where are, where are we as a community? And you can do that. This year, because we had a lot of people saying, it's so much, guys, I mean, I'm alone, I'm in charge of a community, I have two hours a week. Okay, first you, you tell him or her it's impossible. Secondly, you say, yeah, courage. And, 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 thirdly, and thirdly, you say, start to start with something, choose in the list, right? And they say, yeah, but I need to, to have that on the time frame, right? I mean, if, you, if I'm... If I do it, maybe, could you tell me what I can do the first quarter, the, the, the first month? And maybe um, if I do, you say that I need to ask the question in a workshop, is it two hours, is it five hours? Do I need five people? Can I do it with uh, 20? If I do it with 20, what is the, um, the flow in my workshop that I need to do? Do I need to do a world cafe as we just did this morning? Or do I need, people want to have a lot of community managers. They are a bit lost like this and they want to have more concrete not instructions, but guidance on how to do it. And that's what we will try to do as add another of the playbook uh, this year. But we need to find the time because we are super very busy with that community. So that community, Education for Climate, is on open social, as you can imagine. 